after this meditation, I had a feeling of like elation, almost euphoria, but I didn't realize while I was in the course just how strong it was. Uh, that night when I went home, when I went home, things got very different. I started to look at wallpaper in the bathroom and I could see detail in that wallpaper that I had never noticed before. I started to comb my hair and I could hear the comb going through my hair in a way that I, I've never done that before. Uh, I went to the bathroom and I could smell the scent of my own shit in a very strong and powerful way. Um, and then perhaps the most mystical aspect was uh, when I went to bed that night, I turned the lights out in my room and I was completely struck by how beautiful and perfect the blackness was that was all around me in that black space that I go to sleep in every night. There was a creaminess to the, the space that made me almost want to taste this space. It just felt divine. It was perfect. And I went to bed that night feeling like I was in some sort of a paradise or something like that. The next day, with this heightened sensory awareness of taste and sound and uh, eye vision, I started to feel a loss of separation between myself and the objects in the world around me to the point where I started to feel like I was in a bit of a dream or that I was in a dream. Uh, this day I went to the shopping mall and I was wandering around the shopping mall almost pointlessly, uh, Fairview Mall in Toronto, and I'm wandering around this mall and I hear this music playing in the mall, The Wanderer, this old 1950s song, The Wanderer, and I thought, this is very funny, I'm wandering around the mall and here's The Wanderer music playing. Is this music in my head or is it in the mall? And then I was thinking, is the whole mall in my head? Like, I really couldn't tell um, whether this was a dream or not. Uh, I later found in my research that this feeling of a loss of separation is something that the Buddhists and uh, Hindus consider a form of enlightenment. It's uh, seeing a deeper reality, seeing the oneness of things, at least at a, a low level form of enlightenment. Enlightenment. It's also referred to as nature mysticism, where there's loss of separation occurs. Um, it's actually quite a common mystical experience to happen. And it did feel very mystical to me. It didn't feel crazy at all. However, uh, my parents were getting very concerned and they were asking me about things and I just had to tell them, it's as if I've met God. It's as if I've met God and you want me to act normal. I mean, it's, it's just this very strong experience that I'm going through, and it's sort of hard to behave myself and act like a normal human being. And uh, from there, things got worse, um, or better. You can look at it that way, then things got better, because uh, the fourth day of the course really was a day off, and then the fifth day we went back with someone from our family or a friend that the course was trying to recruit. So I brought my father, even though I knew he wouldn't be that interested in taking the course. Uh, but uh, we were sitting in a hotel ballroom, like I said before, a uh, five-star hotel. And uh, after about 15 minutes or 20 minutes, they took my father to another room to kind of give him the hard sell on the course and how good it is, blah, blah, blah. And they started asking us if we needed to know anything, if we had any more questions, or if we needed to maybe consider the advanced program they had. And I just started looking at the ceiling and seeing how beautiful everything was and started asking myself, uh, like, wow, uh, the feeling I have now is a feeling that I, I don't think I would ever have until I died. I thought that maybe once I went to heaven or something that I would have this feeling inside my heart of tremendous completion. Uh, and I realized I seemed to know everything that I needed to know about life. It was, it was fantastic. Then I started to put two and two together, the feeling of being like in a paradise and the sensation, the physical sensations being so heightened and this feeling of knowing everything. And then I started to look back on the scuba diving experience and then it hit me that I had actually died, that this was somehow a death experience and that I was dead, physically dead. 
And immediately this became very funny to me because if I was dead, then that meant that everybody in the room knew I was dead, that people, since the scuba diving accident, had known that I was somehow dead, uh, and that they were in on a kind of a joke, and that I knew that I wasn't in heaven or nirvana or some sort of perfect space. I, I knew that, but I knew I wasn't alive either, so I must have been in some sort of in-between world or bardo or dream world, a purgatory, some, some way to go on and go to heaven, and that somehow I was being given new information and that I was being tested. And once I got this idea in my head that I was being tested to go to heaven, then things got really strange, because I started to follow not what I saw physically going on around me, but how I was interpreting things symbolically. I was looking for a portal from this hotel room into heaven. Uh, I needed to find my way to get to heaven. And, uh, and I'll use heaven as the term for the other world because it's closest to you and to me. Uh, I don't know if it's heaven, but we'll stick with that Christian use. Um, I found myself in an empty ballroom, beautiful, gold chairs, Muslim carpets, chandeliers, and I was tremendously excited. I, I was screaming and I was running around the room because I knew I was going to be dying. I knew I was going to heaven. And, I, and this was very exciting for me. And uh, I, the first thing I thought was that I needed to listen to my own instincts. That that's where the clues were going to come from and what I needed to do in, in this test process I was about to enter. Um, I took off my shirt. And I was standing there in what felt like the beginning of a sacred experience. And then, uh, listening to my own instincts, the first instinct I had was that I needed to pee. Uh, the first thing that happens to us when we're civilized is we learn to control our bodily functions. And it seems that once you're in this world, one of the first things that you want to let go of is your bladder control. Uh, and I peed on the floor. Uh, on the carpet, actually. I pissed on the carpet in what seemed like a sacred ritual and this just to prove to myself that this was an illusion I was living in I got down in it and laid down in it and spread my arms out like I was Jesus Christ um, then I continued to urinate in my own genes at that point I was pissing in my own genes laying there and then I felt this energy shift and I had a lot of energy during this two or three days but then the energy shifted and it became more concentrated in parts of my body. And uh, I felt, for example, my foot. All the energy would be in my foot and lower leg. And I would think about images that have happened in my life or people connected somehow to walking or things related to my feet. And then I would feel the energy leave. And in a sense, I felt like I was going to heaven partially. And this experience happened with my legs and... Uh, both my legs and then my sex organs and I would think about my sex life and it was like okay take it take it I was happy to see that go uh, with all the sexual repression that you go through as a, as a teenager I could feel that energy leaving me uh, I felt energy leaving my heart uh, and then as, as the process moved up my body I felt it go to my brain and my eyes and at the moment where I felt the energy was leaving my eyes I thought that when that energy left my eyes that I would go blind. And I felt the energy and then it left. I threw my glasses off thinking I would never need them anymore. And I was giving up my eyesight. Uh, and then I looked around and I realized that I was still seeing things. That the world, funny enough, even though I was dead, the world still seemed to look really real. Was very interesting. The, the only hallucination I had was at the end of this whole energy process, I looked up and saw uh, one of the chandelier lights had turned pink. And I think that was a hallucination. And when I saw that light turn pink, uh, it struck me as a sign of divine love and grace. And that somehow the most important part of my process was over. That, that was the feeling.